today's case underwent bilateral LASIK eight years ago to correct myopia. All was well during the first few months, but then, the left eye began losing vision and had to be operated again. A corneal ring segment had been implanted in the left eye, shortly after the LASIK procedure. Pentacam analysis confirmed significant corneal ectasia in the left eye as the cause for high astigmatism and increased higher order aberrations. The only option to safely improve refractive error was to implant a dark fake IOL, and with this lens, accurate white to white measurements are critical to determine the correct size. We selected the appropriate 13.7 mm model. After creating a corneal sideboard, Coesive OVD is used to fill the anterior chamber. The procedure requires a 3.2 mm limbal incision, placed temporarily at 0 degrees. Again, minimal cohesive OVD is used to create space for the ICL implant. The next step is to verify the correct placement of the lens in the cartridge. Everything is ok, so let's go ahead with the implant. The lens is introduced in the interior chamber with a controlled tapping-like motion of the injector plunger. The lens is slowly and safely delivered, now you will see it beautifully unfold in the interior chamber. Now the Palakaris manipulator is used to place the thin foot plates under the iris. We first aim to tuck the distal ones, but the lens was rotating against the intended position, so we stopped the maneuver and first placed the proximal foot plates. They are quite thin and malleable so minimum pressure is applied. OVD is again used near the distal foot plates to facilitate their manipulation. Now let's go ahead, positioning the nasal inferior foot plate under the iris, while attempting to bring the lens optic back into correct orientation. The fourth and final foot plate is positioned under the iris. The lens is now correctly positioned and oriented towards the zero axis. Our goal is to have it slightly rotated to 6 degrees, so let's gently direct it to our desired axis. It is very important to completely wash out the OVD from the anterior chamber, in order to avoid post-operative IOP spikes. The surgery is now close to ending, time to hydrate the corneal side port and main incision. Myocol is instilled into the anterior chamber to induce pupillary meiosis. The pupil begins constricting while remaining nicely centered on the corneal light reflex. Further hydration of the main incision is done to obtain adequate corneal closure. Finally. Intracameral sephiroxime is injected and the surgical procedure is complete. The patient is seen on post-operative day 1, and the results are quite splendid. There is no reference to ocular pain or discomfort. A remarkable 2025 plus 3 letters uncorrected vision is verified, meaning that this patient's long-desired spectacle and dependence was now finally achieved.